You're going to have to hear one of it this Sunday, next Sunday's a play, and then the, the, the ending you're going to have to hear it on the Sunday right before Christmas. But uh, we're going to start it and launch it this morning, and uh, we're going to be talking about Jesus. Amen. Uh, and, and how exciting is that, just to talk about the Lord and about how amazing He is. And the title of this message is, is titled, For Unto Us a Son is Given. For Unto Us a Son is Given, and that's where we're going to go. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And we're going to really base this whole series off of this prophecy given by the prophet Isaiah speaking about the Lord to come. And of course, we know now, we know he's speaking about Jesus. But at the time when Isaiah began to prophesy this, he didn't know. He didn't know the whole story. He didn't know what would happen. He didn't know the type of person Christ would be. But God spoke to him and used him and gave us this wonderful, wonderful verse in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And it says this. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to talk about, and we're going to go one by one in these precious, awesome things that the Bible says Jesus would be called. Now we call him Jesus, and we know he responds to that name. We know he responds to that name in any language. If we call him Jesus, he's also known around this time of year as Emmanuel, God with us. We know he has many names, and we know he has many, many titles. We understand that. But we're going to talk about these specific ones, and we're going to make sure that during this time of year, we understand that this is who Christ is, and this is who Christ wants to be. Not just in the Christmas season, but in all times of life. God wants to be this for our, our, in our lives, and sometimes we forget these things, and, and, and it'll make more sense as we go along. But the very first part I want to talk about is the Bible says that it calls him wonderful. Wonderful. Now, in a lot of the newer translations, and I'm not picking on them, but they'll remove something that's very important. Go back to that verse, Robert, if you don't mind. If you'll look up here on the PowerPoint, you'll see it says, His name shall be called Wonderful, and there's a comma. Uh -huh. oh, man. Wonderful, comma. Now, in the newer versions, it says he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus isn't a wonderful counselor, because he is. And we'll get to that in point two of my message today. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is the Bible doesn't say he's a wonderful counselor. The Bible says his name shall be called Wonderful, period. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Amen. He is wonderful. And if we understand what that means, it will begin to expand our idea of wonderful. Because we've used that word before. We've used that, this, this uh, whatever I'm eating, man, this is a wonderful dish. Or, or, man, it's a wonderful day. Or whatever it is. That's a wonderful outfit or wonderful decorations. But when we really get to talk about what wonderful means, and the Bible capitalizes it, so it's not about just a, a, a term that we would deem just another adjective to lay on something. But when the Bible says that he is wonderful, he is the definition of wonderful. He yeah. is what it means. Everything else is less compared to him. Wonderful means, and I'm going to read it to you right out of the Bible. This is what it means. To be inspiring, full of pleasure, extremely good, marvelous, magnificent, superb, glorious, fantastic, terrific, tremendous, sensational, incredible, Amen. out of this world, or awesome. Yeah. Now when the Bible says he is wonderful, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It goes beyond our little mere vernacular and what we are titled to. Because yeah. a lot of times we use a lot of words for a lot of stuff. You can say a bologna sandwich is wonderful, but that doesn't mean it's the same kind of wonderful that Jesus Christ is and that he should be in our lives. Jesus should be inspiring to us. Jesus should be full of pleasure. Jesus should be extremely good in our life. Jesus should be marvelous, magnificent. He should be superb to us. He should be fantastic. He should be incredible. He should be out of this world to us. Because we're the ones who love him. We're the ones who serve him. We're the ones that celebrate this glorious man, also God, named Jesus. We celebrate him not just on Christmas. We celebrate him all the time. Yeah. He should be wonderful. 
So we understand, yes, you're agreeing with me. Jesus is wonderful. But here's what we have to ask ourselves. Has Jesus lost his wonder in our eyes? Because something that's so wonderful... That we were just amen and you say, yeah, he's all that stuff. How can we go a day with ignoring him? Right. How can we live our lives the same way we lived it before we met him? Oh, if he's wonderful, if he's what the Bible says, that he is this glorious, awesome, mighty, powerful God, this amazing thing that, that is a gift of God to humanity. If he's all that stuff and we're excited that he is, how can we treat him the way we treat him? Has he lost his wonder in our eyes? Has he become a second thought? Has he become something that, yeah, I love Jesus too. I love this and I love that and Jesus has his place and I put Jesus over here and he holds a little special place in my heart and, and it's okay. But there's from time to time I like, well, I don't really think about praying and don't think about my word. I really don't put my mind on God. I just do my own thing. Then he's not wonderful. All right, man. Amen. Not the way the Bible defines wonderful. Because if he's wonderful to us, then he's life-consuming. Yes. Amen. He, he, he consumes my thoughts. He consumes my hopes, my dreams. He consumes my plans. He consumes my pleasure. He consumes every part of me because he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Jesus desires to be wonderful to us yes. and in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. When we talk about that and talk about all those definitions and all those words that, that I just spoke about him being terrific and inspiring, God wants to be those things in your life. Amen. That's why he came. That's why a son was given. Now, I know the times we want to fast forward to the cross and we say, well, he came to die for our sins. Yes, he did. And, and thank God that he did. And thank the Lord that he did that miracle for us. But let's not forget that it wasn't just to remove sin. He came to be wonderful in your life. He came to be inspiring and terrific to you. He came to be superb in your heart. He became to be exciting to you. Yes. Wonderful, because for the first time ever since the garden, man and God can walk in harmony again. Yes. And it's all because of this little baby that they named Jesus. It's all because of the season we're celebrating. He has to be wonderful. When's the last time God did something wonderful in you, for you, to you? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 We say, well, Pastor, I don't know how long it's been. It's because we're not paying attention. Because God does wonderful things for us and to us and in us every single day, every single moment. The Bible speaks of it so often. The Bible tells us that, that every new, his mercy is renewed. Yes. Yes. Amen. You say, what does that mean? Because the mercy God gave you yesterday can't get you through today. So every morning he renews it. Right. Every morning he says, you know what? They need fresh mercy today. Yeah. They need fresh grace today. They need a fresh touch, a fresh anointing. They need a fresh outlook on life. God yeah. gives that to everyone who believes in him. Yeah. And it's a wonderful thing if we're looking for it and we're living in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's an inspiring thing. It's a superb thing. It's all those words I use. It's all those things that he can be to us. And just think what would happen in the church world today if every Christian got up every day and realized how wonderful yes. Jesus is. Yes. How amazing it is. Man, how could you have the Monday blues when you have a wonderful God? All right. Amen? Amen. Amen. How can you live in doubt and worry and fear? When you got a wonderful Jesus in here. Amen. That rhymes. I didn't mean to, but it did. Yeah. Maybe that's a song someone should write. I don't know. But it's wonderful. Jesus is wonderful. And here's the thing. Sometimes we wait until this part of the season to even talk about how wonderful he is. Yeah. Right. And that's so wrong of us. Yeah. Jesus is wonderful every day. Yeah. He's wonderful every day. But here's the question I want to ask you today. What wonderful thing... Can Jesus, can Jesus do for you today? Because yes. everybody needs something wonderful to happen in their life. Yes. Amen. 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 Anybody want anything wonderful to happen to you today? Yes. Amen. Everybody hand their hand went up. Everybody wants something wonderful to happen to them. And we have different definitions of what that wonderful is. But can I give you the underlying definition? It's Jesus. It's right. Jesus being active in your life and in your heart and in your mind, in every part of your life. If Jesus is up to something in your life, I guarantee it's going to be something wonderful. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. 
and you're going to love it, and you're going to, you're going to appreciate it, and it's going to blow your mind yes. when God does it. Yes. Man, just think about how amazing it would be if we all serve God, knowing how mind-blowing He is. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Man, that's excitement. That's daily excitement. To get up, man, what is God going to do today that just blows my mind? What am I going to encounter today that God just knocks my socks off? A lot of times we go on through our walk with God. All right. Look it up. That's another day, Jesus. Lord, help me. Oh, man. Ooh. God, give me strength to get through today. Yeah, that's inspiring. That's terrific. That's awesome. That's wonderful. That's something to write home about. But that's the way we treat this wonderful thing called Jesus. This wonderful salvation we have. What can he do wonderful for you? And I want you to think about it. Because at the end of this service, I'm going to get fast forward and let you know that at the end of this service, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask him for it. Yes. What wonderful thing can he do for you? What person can he save? What, what, what wound can he heal? What is wonderful to you today? What is the wonderful thing you would love to happen in your life? Yes. Because Jesus came to be that for you. He came to be that for you. Hallelujah. And sometimes we don't think about it. Sometimes we think well, we've got this wonderful, awesome, and I'm going to use the Christmas tree this morning. we got this awesome thing, and that's a beautiful tree. But you know what? It doesn't have any decorations on it or no presents underneath. But it's still beautiful. Yes. But how amazing and how, how, how crazy would it be if you as the church went and got me the most wonderful gift that would blow my mind, and you set it under the tree, and I just left it there. And you say, well, Pastor, are you blowing up in your gift? No, no. I just like the way it looks from here. Looks good. <laughs> Thanks for the gift. You would say, well, Pastor, you know, you got to open it. You got you to get in it. You got to open it up. No, nah, you know, it, it's okay. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll let someone else open it. I, you know, I, I don't have time to open it. I, I, I'm busy, you know, but I like to admire it from afar. You would say, well, then why did we even give you the gift? Amen. Sometimes God's got to be looking at us and says, guys, do you realize I've wrapped the most awesome present and it, you can open it daily. It's new, brand new every single day. You can open it. You can unwrap Jesus. You can let all the stuff that is in him come out because the Bible says in him the fullness of the Godhead lives bodily. Everything God has ever dreamed for you is in Christ. And he's wonderful. And we've got access to him anytime we want. Yes. We just got to unwrap it. Thank you, you just got to start looking at God. It's like he's wonderful again. Yes. When you find how amazing and wonderful Jesus is, it's hard to get down. Yes, it's hard to get pessimistic. All right. Amen. When you think, man, God is wonderful. Because yes, we've got a, a lot of big cases of the yeah buts. <laughs> when it comes to Jesus. I know God's good, but yeah, that sounds good, Pastor, but you don't know what I'm going through. Uh -huh. Yeah, that sounds good for you because you just do this all day and you don't have a real life and you just lose yourself in your Bible all day. That's what people think I do. <laughs> no, I'm just like you. I got issues. I got problems. I got to go to work on Monday. I do things. I've got a life just like everybody else. But you say, what's the difference? I have to unwrap him every day. I have to get excited about him. How can I be down when I know he's on my side? How in the world can I be, be sorrowful? How can I be full of worry when I know he holds tomorrow? How in the world, what in the world can I ever be, get down about in my life and be justified in it if I could just realize Jesus is wonderful and he wants to do something wonderful? Wonderful in me every day. Amen. He does. We think God is up there just saying, well, I've got to save the really good moments for special times. No, he doesn't. No, no. God isn't short of special moments. God isn't short of power or glory. All right. He isn't saying, well, I've got to save this one for that moment in life. And they're just going to have to just, you know, just do nothing today. They're just going to have to just go through life and be miserable for a minute. God doesn't treat us that way. There's so many wonderful things in him. You just got to open it. Yes, yes. So again, I'll ask the question before I move on to my next point. What wonderful thing can God do for you today? What wonderful thing can he do in you? What can he do through you? Because it's there at your fingertips. 
You just got to treat him the way the Bible calls him. He shall be wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Let's move to the next one. Counselor. The Bible says he's wonderful, comma, then counselor. What is a counselor? I'll give you the definition out of the Bible. It says this. Someone trained to give guidance, an advisor, a consultant, a mentor, an expert, or a specialist. Amen. That's a counselor. Counselor today is someone who fills you full of minutes. Amen. You go to a counselor and say, well, what's wrong with you? I don't feel good. I get down. Well, here's some uppers. Thank you. Well, I just feel like I'm too up. I'm all the way up. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Well, here's some pills. Take them. I'll calm you down. Uh -huh. Greatest counselor, uh, that'll be $5,000 bajillion. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> That's not what Jesus is. No. When the Bible says he's a counselor, understand that our counselor is the epitome of counselors. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He invented the profession. Yeah. He is the owner of it. Solely him. There's none like him in the world. I know there's Christian counseling and it's a good thing and there's part of it. But nobody can out-counsel God. God is the authority on all things. And Jesus is the most amazing counselor you'll ever meet in your life. Amen. But you actually have to go to him. All right. See? You have to open your life to him. Yes. He's not a, a he's not gonna butt into your life. He's not gonna go and be like, yeah, you need this, hear this. No, he's gonna wait for you to invite him because he right. is a gentleman. Thank you. Yes. Jesus wants to save the whole world, but if you remember in Revelation, he says, I stand at the door and I knock. Yes. I'm not gonna yes. kick the door down. I'll knock and knock and knock every day, but you got to open the door and you got to actually let me in your life. The problem is, the reason why we don't look at Jesus as a counselor, we look at him as Savior, we look at him as Lord, but when it comes to advice, we'd rather go with one another. It's because we don't want to open that door to Christ because he might tell us actually what we need to hear. Yes. Amen. And we don't want to hear what we need to hear. We want to hear what we want to hear. And Jesus has been unemployed as a counselor for a long time in many movements. Yeah. Why? Because we don't really care what he thinks. We don't care about his guidance. We don't care about his advisement. We don't care about his consultation. We don't want him as a mentor. We don't look at him as an expert on these things because it's too, it, we're in 2018, almost 2019. Surely Jesus is outdated. Sure, all those advisements of the scriptures, we can't plot today. It's a different world. So we don't care about his expertise and we don't look at him as a specialist in anything but our salvation. That's right. Amen. When's the last time you prayed for your car because Jesus is the great mechanic? All right. Well, Jesus isn't the mechanic. Why not? Amen. The Bible says everything that exists in this world was made in him, for him, by him, for his pleasure. Yeah. News flash. Oh, what's his face? Who's his name? Al Gore. Didn't invent the internet. God did. That little iPhone you have, all men take credit for it, but God invented that thing. Amen. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. God put it all in order. God gives men brilliant ideas. God gives them great expertise, and that's wonderful, and that's amazing. But don't ever think that God's not the counsel of all things. Does God, do we as men take his stuff and manipulate it and turn it into something evil? Yes, we do. All the time. But understand, God is the great expert of everything in your life. Amen. He's the counselor. Jesus is our counselor. He wants to give you guidance. Yes. If you'll ask him. Amen. Jesus, what should I do? Amen. But a lot of times we don't say that. What we say is, Jesus, I'm about to do this. Get on board. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 This is what I'm about to do, God, and if you could just find your way into it, that would be great. Because I could use the help. I want to do this, and I'm going to kind of dig a little here, a little bit, and I, and I say this to my teenagers uh, that are listening to me. Right now, you shouldn't be out looking for your wife. Right. Uh, uh, what? Huh? I need a girlfriend. I need a boyfriend. I, what do I do? I'll be miserable and lonely for all my days. No, you won't. Take the approach God took with Adam. When Adam needed a spouse, God brought one to him. Amen. That's called guidance. All right. 
but they're so cute and they make me laugh and they make me giggle and they make me smile and they make me feel warm and fuzzy in here and then I mention they're so pretty. <laughs> God, I know that's the one for me and I'm just using this as an example and we'll get on to bigger things here in a minute but I'm using this as an example because this is what I see. I see a lot of people that they got a plan and they're not asking God to dictate the plan and guide the plan. They're asking God to get on board with the plan. This is what I want God and this is what I'm going to do so you need to fit your way in here. Now we don't talk to him like that but that's the way we behave. Right. And God's just up in heaven saying well it's a big mistake. And, 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 and sometimes even God will send people by with the voice of the Lord with him. And say, hey, I don't think that's the right thing to do. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Well, you got to stop sinning. I don't want to hear that either. Well, you got to get your life right. Well, I don't want to hear that either. I just want to do my thing and let God get on board. And when I die, he takes me to heaven and gives me all the stuff I want. Because that's the relationship we want. That's not in the Bible. It's not there. He is a guide. He guides those. He is trained. He is an advisor, a consultant, a mentor. And I want to give you this, an expert. Jesus is the expert of everything you're in your life that you're going through. He's an expert in medical conditions. He's an expert in financial situations. He's an expert in, in emotional problems. He's an expert in spiritual problems. He's an expert in everything from tying your shoes to dealing with cancer. He is an expert across the board. Yes. Yes. He knows what you have need of before you even ask. That's how good a counselor Christ is. Yes. That when you come to him and you're like, here I am, Lord. He's like, I already know. Yes. I know everything. Uh -huh. I know the problem. I know the issue. And best of all, he has the answer. But you have to actually let him in. The problem is, have we walked away from his counsel? Uh -huh. As a body, as an individual, have I walked away from the counsel of God? You say, what's a good the factor? No, if I walked away from the counsel of God. The counsel of God is written down in the pages of his book. If that book doesn't really matter to you and what's said in that book is just up for interpretation, it's up for opinion, well, I know the Bible says that, but I mean, really, really, who can live that stuff? And, and it's just such an old book, and we live in today's society, and, and you know, I don't know, I, I kind of like this guy's philosophy, and I like this, what this lady said on TV, and I like this guy, he wrote a book about it, makes me feel good, makes me feel like I don't have any problems, yeah, I still sin, yeah, I still got habits, yeah, I still do things, but you know what, it's all good. No, you've abandoned the counsel of God. Yes. You've abandoned the counsel of God. When the counsel of God matters to you, that book matters to you. What is said in red matters to you. What is written down in those pages matters to you. Because it's the guide to heaven. It's the guide to where you need to be in life. And it's Jesus. And I've even heard people say, well, you don't have to know all the Bible to know Jesus. No, but you've got to know the Word of God because He is the Word of God. Amen. Jesus is the Word of God. Don't tell me how much you love Jesus and you don't love Scripture. Right. The two are one and the same. Amen. He's the counsel and His counsel is written down. I don't know how many times in my professional career as a minister, I've had people come to me and they say, I got a problem, I got an issue, what, do you, what should I do about it? And I say, well, you need to get in your word and you need to pray. And they're like, no. Uh -huh. That's not what I need to do. Yeah. There's something else. There's got to be more. There's got to be more, Pastor. Uh -huh. There's got to be something you can do, some kind of prayer you can pray, something I can give towards, something that will just make this go away. No. Because the only way you're going to get answered is to go to the counselor himself. Amen. And the way you get counsel is you get in your Bible and you get on your knees. And you listen to what God has to say. And you share with him. And you allow him to ask you the difficult questions. You ask him to give you the answers that maybe you don't want to hear at the time. But you know it's best for you. Amen. Amen. Jesus desires to be our counselor in every area of our lives. What issue, and here's the second question I'm going to ask you today. What issues are you facing today that could use his counsel? What are you facing today that up until this point you think and assume, well, God knows and he knows it's going to know. You have to invite. Amen. You can't. If this is my problem and I'm holding it right here 
And God is that cable over there. If I sit here and hold it, it doesn't matter how close I get to him. If I never invite him to take it, he never will. Amen. Because he's not a thief. In order for God to take something from you, you've got to lay it down. You've got to take it to him and you've got to let it go. You can't say, God, take it out of my hands. Pry it out of there. Pry it out because I'm not going to let it go. You're just going to have to break my will, God, and jerk it out. God, no. No. But if you freely let it go, he'll take it away. He'll take it. He'll counsel you through whatever issue you've got, but you've got to give it to him. You've got to lay it down at his feet. You've got to trust his counsel. And whatever he says, you've got to follow it to the T. Yes. We're bad in America. We never want to take our medicine as long as we should. We want to take it until the symptoms go away and we feel better. Uh-huh. How many of you got medication in your house today that your doctor said, now don't, don't stop. Take it all until it's gone, but it's in your cabinet right now. Because <laughs> right. right. doctor said, I want you to take this for two weeks straight. You take it for three days, you're like, whew, I feel good. I feel awesome. I feel great. I feel like a new person again. And the rest of that medication is just stored away somewhere. Amen? Amen. So how does that look in the Christian world? Let me tell you this. You come to a message like this today, you hear God's wonderful. God's a counselor. Man, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's great. He's awesome. Pastor said he's wonderful. He wants to do wonderful things in me. Pastor said he's a counselor. He knows what I have need of. He's going to fix all my problems. Woohoo! Yeah, we're great. We're awesome. And then Monday, you put it right in the cabinet and you shut it and be like, over. Uh-huh. Guess what? That little bit of euphoria is going to go away. And life is going to crawl back in. And then you're going to get mad at me and get mad at God and say, that pastor told me God cared about me and do wonderful things. He hasn't done nothing wonderful for me. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This is the way the world looks at things. This is why people get mad at God because they say God doesn't work for them. No, God is a daily God. All the time God. Today you're excited about God. Your mind's on God. God can get to you. But if tomorrow you shut your mind and you shut your heart to God, God can't get to you. You've got to open your mind. You've got to open your heart on a daily basis because he is wonderful and he is a counselor and he'll be there for you. But you've got to open up yourself to it and daily take your medication to get what you need. Can't take a little bit of scripture on Sunday and coast till next Sunday. You know why? Because all the little hidden stuff that I think is gone isn't. I may have chopped off a little bit of its fruit, but the root is still there. And the longer I keep doing that, the root is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And to the point where I can't cut it down anymore, it's going to be too thick for me, and I'm just going to be stuck. That's the way it works, guys. Jesus wants to be a counselor. He wants to do these mighty things for you. And that leads me to this part. And this is the part we're going to transition. I'm going to give you about half of this today and half of it two Sundays from now. The Bible says this, that he is the mighty God. Yes. The mighty God. You say, well, what does that mean? I'm going to give you the definition of mighty according to the Bible. It says to possess great and impressive power or strength. To be fearsome, ferocious, big, tough, muscular, or dominant. When the Bible says God is a mighty God, it means he is impressive in the power that he has. It means that he is stronger than any force you've ever felt. It means that he is ferocious. That he will not stop. That he will not be shaken. That he will not slumber nor sleep. It means he's big. He's bigger than whatever you've got. It don't matter how big it is. It don't matter what the doctor said. It don't matter what lawyers say. It doesn't matter what the world says. He's a great, big, mighty God. And he's bigger than your problem. It also means he's tough. He can take it. If you say, well, this but this devil just won't go away. He's not going to outfight God. He's not going to wear out God. God will always be there, and God will be there when the smoke clears. He is tough, and he can handle it. Amen. Sometimes we don't take things to God because we think God can't handle it. You say, well, that's kind of crazy, but we do it. Yes. We have these little things that we, that we put in categories of, I can handle that. I don't need to pray about that because I can handle that. All right? Right? Even though the Bible says go to the Lord in prayer about everything. Uh-huh. I can handle this. I don't need to ask God about this. I, I got this. I, I got it under control. I can handle this part. Right? And then we get into big situations. We're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And people 
people say, we need to pray and trust God. Like, well, I know that and I understand that, but you don't understand what it is. You don't understand the problem. So we've got big, super big problems that we think, I can't give it to God because I need results now. So we've got this little tiny box of stuff we let God handle in the middle. And I'm sorry, our great big God can't fit in that box. And neither will he try. When you say, God, I got this, and I, God is so big, it's bigger than you here, then then you give this little area for God to work and then complain, well, God won't do nothing for me. Uh-huh. Let me give you a little thing. How many of you want some miracles? Yeah. How do you think God can still work miracles? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. All right. Don't make me start preaching a different message. <laughs> God can work miracles. Amen. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. still in the miracle working business. Yeah. Awesome, right? Isn't God amazing? He can do so many great things. You know what has to happen before a miracle? Defeat, pain, heartache, trouble, problems. You don't need a miracle when it's all smooth sailing. Amen. Amen? Amen. You don't need it. If you're healthy, then you don't need a physician. If everything's good and you're like, man, everything's butterflies and rainbows in my life. I got I got money. I got a good wife or I got a good husband. I got great kids. I got everything I want. The house of my dreams. The car that I want always. You know what? I'm perfectly good in health. Everybody loves me. You don't need anything. All right. So you say, well, what are you saying, Pastor? We're saying the reason why God isn't working miracles in our lives anymore is because we've deemed the stuff we're going through too big for his power. And we won't say it to him, but that's the way we behave. We don't say it, we don't voice it and say, God, this is too big for you. We never would. Mm -hmm. But we act like that. Mm -hmm. It's in the way we do things. It's the way we handle things. It used to be where we would teach people, and we need to start doing it again, that the first thing you do is go to your knees. But now we've developed phrases of, Pastor, man, it's hard at work, and it's hard at life, and hard at home, and I've done everything I know to do, and I guess... All you can do now is just pray. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Have we forgot something? Right. Amen. Yes. Right. Don't wait till you got to throw a Hail Mary to win the game to call on God. Uh-huh. Amen. Call on him in the beginning. Yes. Let him work a miracle. Let him know you know he's a mighty God. Let him know you know he's a big God. That he's muscular. That he's dominant. That there's nothing that he can't do. If you'll approach life with that in the beginning of your problems, God can work miracles. Amen. 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 He doesn't work miracles because we think, eh, it's kind of scary. All right. and, and I'm not telling you you got to do this. But I'm just saying, ask yourself this question. You don't have to answer it out loud, but answer it in your heart. If God told you, or maybe didn't God, let's see, let me rephrase that, because everybody can say, well, yeah, God told me I would. No. If this morning when you were coming in church right here, there was a blind beggar right there, how many of you would have the faith to lay hands on him and say, be healed in the name of Jesus and receive your sight? Oh, Pastor. Oh, I need a handwritten letter from God to do that. Why? Because what if I pray and God doesn't do nothing? Boy, I'm going to be embarrassed. Boy, won't egg be on my face? I think we're forgetting who we're trusting in. I think we're forgetting whose reputation we're representing. The reason why miracles happen in the book of Acts is because unlearned men, men who were fishermen all their life, they realized they followed a man who was amazing and wonderful, and he was a counselor, and they knew his might. They watched him walk on water. They watched him raise the dead. They watched him open blinded eyes. They watched him open deaf ears. They watched him put demons to flight. They watched this man do that, and they said, you know what? I don't have anything for you, but in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. That's miracle working faith. And if we don't have it anymore, it's not because God doesn't do it. It's because we have forgotten that he is still a mighty God. Amen. Amen. Say, well, I and mean, I have my own theories, and I know I've got to be quiet here in a minute, but I have my own theories. The reason why we can go to third world countries and God can heal and move and do mighty things and do all these things is because they're not as cynical as us. 
They haven't found many reasons and many different avenues to ease their discomfort. They're desperate. They know the only hope they got is God. Amen. When America gets back to that, God is going to show up. But as long as we say, well, God, I only need you in this area. I only need you right here. I don't want to invite you too far in because then you might ask something of me. You might change my life. You may convict me of something. You may tell me i got to lay something down that I really enjoy doing. So, God, don't get too close to me. When you're over there, when you have nothing and you've got no options, no answers, you come to a church service, you come to a missionary revival, and you walk for miles in the mud to sit on no paddy pay. Patty pews with no air conditioning, with no donuts in the foyer, with no coffee to drink. They just came because they got an issue. They got a problem. And they know Jesus is the answer. That's why God works miracles there and does it here. It's not because God has rejected America. America has rejected God. We've forgotten how mighty this God is. We've forgotten how powerful he is. Because now if we heard pop pills. Amen. Never even stop and blink an eye to pray a prayer. God touch my headache. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not telling you not to take your medication. <laughs> well, how I, I feel faith. Well, if that's faith, then you move. But don't get mad at me. you got to consult God for that stuff. But what I'm trying to get at, guys, is there was a time <laughs> as a body of believers that we believed our God could do anything. Yeah. And we didn't limit him. We didn't wait on the motion of the ocean. We didn't wait on the mood of the service. We knew God was here whether people were shouting or not. Yeah. How do we know God's here? How do I know the Holy Ghost is here today? Because I brought him. Yeah. He's in here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He didn't come out of here. He didn't come out of this. He comes out of here. someone ask you for help and you offer your help and they won't let you help. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Me and my wife go around with this. We'll use my wife. She'll say, Chad, can you help me with this? And I'll say, sure, honey. I'd love to. Help me hang this picture. You got it. What do I need to do? Well, get a hammer, get a nail. All right. Put a picture, hold it up there. Right here. No, no, no. Don't do it there. Don't do it there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me do it. Well, honey, I think. Well, no, no, no. I do. It comes a point where I'm like, do you even want me here? Because <laughs> if you want this done and you ask for my help, I'm going to help you. But if you just want me to stand here and watch you do it, then ask me for that. <laughs> Don't ask me for help. Ask me to be your audience. <laughs> Will you come and watch me do this? Yeah. I'll sit right by you. Baby, you're looking good. Doing great. Awesome. It's up there. Now that's humorous, but we do that to God. We pray and we get in moments where we're like, God, I know it's your help. I know it's your help. I know you're amazing, you're awesome, and you're mighty. And I so desperately need you. God, I know I need you. God, please help me. And God says, okay, I'm getting ready to help. And we're like, God, don't like that. Don't do that. Don't touch that. That's my pet sin. Don't touch it. Don't convict me of it. Don't tell me I gotta get away from that. Don't tell me I gotta walk away from those people. Don't tell me I gotta do this. Don't tell me I gotta be there. God, just help me. God's like, you don't want my help. You don't want my help. You don't want it. And you say, man, Pastor, you're being mean. No, I'm not. I'm just being honest. Amen. Do we want the man's help or are we not? Do we want Jesus to be mighty God or don't we? 
Because we want him to be mighty God, we've got to say, come and help. And here's the thing. I'm going to give you a little, little thing I've learned about God. I get into messes. Amen? Anybody else give me messes? I get into messes. Of my own design. It's not God didn't fail me. The scripture didn't fail me. I blew it. Because I'm a man and I make mistakes. I don't intend to do them. I don't intentionally do them. But I make mistakes. Just like everybody else. And I've made some whoppers. And usually when I'm in the middle of a whopping mistake, the last person I want to talk to is God. But then just like God forms, something happens in my life, kid gets sick, problems with finances, problems with something else, church problems, whatever it is, I got to go to God. And I got to say, God, I need your help. I need your help. Church is falling apart. I need your help. Lord, help my marriage. Lord, help my finances. Help my kids. Help them. Help this. And God is more than willing to say, God, say, Chad, I'm going to help you. But you know where I'm going to start? In you. And we're going to fix you, and then we'll worry about the marriage and the finances and the church. Because God's not going to fix your problem and ignore you. Not going to do it. I've learned that lesson too many times. So I've said, God, please, I don't want to feel convicted. I don't want to die. I know I'm stupid, and I know I'm dumb, and I know I blew it. God, I don't want the lesson. He's like, sorry, son, if you want me to be anywhere else in your life, I first got to be in your heart. Amen. Amen. If I'm not in your heart, I can't be in your marriage. If I'm not in your heart, I can't be in your finances. If I'm not in your heart, I can't be in your health. If I'm not in your heart, I can't be on your job. I can't, I can't do it. If I'm not in your heart, I can't be anywhere else. That's something you got to learn. But he's mighty enough to fix this, and he's mighty enough to touch those things. Yes. Jesus desires to be mighty for us, in us, and through us. And I know i got to quit. Sister, can you come play me some shutting up music? <laughs> Jesus desires to be mighty. And it's not an intention that he says, you know, look at me. No, it's just him being himself. God can't help but be mighty. It's in his DNA. Everything he does is mighty. The words he speaks are mighty. When he moves, nations tremble. He's just a mighty God. It's just who he is. But if we forget that and we begin to treat him, and this is something, and I, I, I don't want to dig too far here because we can get to a whole another message, but one of the things that I think that we've done a great disservice to Jesus is we brought Jesus down to our level. And I'm not getting on to anybody if you've got one of these things, but how many of you ever seen somebody, you're in traffic, you look up and they say, my co-pilot is a carpenter. Jesus is my co-pilot. He's not the co-pilot. He's the pilot. He's the plane. He's the wind. He's the fuel. He's it all. Every bit of it. Amen. The minute I begin to bring Jesus down to me, now is Jesus a friend that sticks closer than a brother? You better believe it. Does he understand my infirmities and can be felt with my pain? Yes. Absolutely he can. He's understanding as anything or any person you'll ever meet. He understands. When my heart's broken, he knows how it feels. He knows every tear, every hurt, every scar. He knows it all. And he can go back there and we can sit there and he will let me cry on his shoulder for as long as I need. But don't ever get it twisted that he's just your best bud. He's your mighty God. Don't ever forget he's mighty God. He's not just your buddy. He's not just your pal. He'll be your buddy. He'll be your pal. But he is your God. And he is mighty. And he is glorious. And he is worthy of praise and adoration and reverence all your days. The world has turned him into my buddy Jesus. Like a stupid sitcom. Jesus in the corner just spouting out advice whenever we want to take it. No. He's almighty God. Amen. The Bible says he's so mighty that one day every knee. Every knee that's ever been created. From Adam all the way down. And boy, it's going to be a glorious day when we see some of these jokers bow a knee. Amen. People that have accused us of being stupid, silly. And I hope they all get saved. But the, ma the truth of the matter is they're not. They're going to bow a knee. And they're going to look at the Lord, God Almighty. 
whether they want to or not, they're going to have to bow a knee and say, you are God Almighty. And I was wrong. That's how mighty he is. Don't forget it. And I got more to talk about his might. That's why I wanted to bridge right here because we're going to pick up next time that we have service like this. We're going to pick up with the mighty God again because there's so much we can talk about right now. But I want to ask you the question, what mighty thing can Jesus do for you, in you, or through you today? Three questions I ask you. I ask you, what wonderful thing can he do for you? What counsel do you need? And what mighty thing can he do? God wants to do all of those today. Today. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? Today. One of the great chapters of faith starts with the word now. It says now faith is now. Not two years from now. Not five years from now. Not a month down the road, but now faith. Now faith is. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith. When I'm telling you what you need right now, I'm not saying God's going to work you out a 12-point plan and maybe someday in one blue moon it's all going to come together. I'm asking you to have faith that this mighty God can touch you now, can move now, right now. What wonderful thing needs to happen now? What counsel needs to happen now? What questions, what direction have you been searching for? What mighty thing does, does God need to happen? What miracle needs to take place in your life? God can do it right now if you believe him for it. The problem is we pray our prayers and maybe one day, hopefully, they'll float up high enough to get to the throne of God. It's not the way it works. God hears you. God's brought you to this place right now, this moment in time, because he wants to be wonderful. He wants to be counselor. He wants to be mighty. He has a desire to do it. But you've got to invite him in. He's not going to force himself on you just because you heard this message. Don't think all of a sudden this is going to be activated in your life. No. you got to open it up just like the present. Amen. you got to open it up. you got to let it in. you got to let God do what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. I want to ask you, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need something wonderful. I need some counsel. I need something mighty. And you actually know what it is. And it's not a general. I'm not asking you to be general. Everybody wants wonderful things. Everybody wants direction. Everybody wants a miracle. But I mean something genuinely right now that the Holy Spirit is saying, this, you need to give it to me right now. This needs to be mine right now. If you'll listen, God will speak to you. If you'll listen, God is here. I know he is. He's here. He'll speak. If you'll listen right now to your heart. If you'll listen right now, God will tell you, hey, this, this needs to be mine right now. If you say, Pastor, I'm hearing that right now. Pastor, I understand. I hear God speaking to me right now. And one of those things you talked about, I'm dealing with them. And I want resolution today. I want God to do something right now, this very hour, this very moment. I want God to do it. Then right where you are, can you just put your hand up? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hands all over this place. This is what we're going to do. We did this last Sunday. I'm going to invite you to come up. You don't have to. If you feel like you want to, you can. You can pray in your seat. If you want to come up here and you want prayer, I'll be happy to pray for you. Men of the church and women of the church will be glad to pray for you. These altars are open, and you can come right now if you want. If you want to stay back there, that's great too, but we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to do something mighty. Amen? I want us to pray right now. Heavenly Father, God, you are mighty. You are great. You are wonderful. You are the counselor of all ages. God, I ask you right now, whatever it is you stirred in their heart, whatever they raised that hand for, whatever it is, God, I'm believing right now for you to move. Not next week, not next year, but right now. God, I'm not demanding it of you. I'm not commanding it of you. I'm just believing it in you. I know you can. I know there's nothing hindering you. There's not a devil in hell that can hold your words back. There's not an enemy that exists that you can't trample over and dominate. God, you are the mighty God. Jesus is your holy name. And there is power in that name. And we claim that name.
name over these situations, over these areas. God, be wonderful to us this morning. Be amazing to us. Be mighty, God, like never before. And move upon your people. We are desperate for you. We don't want another answer from the world. We don't want another quick fix. We want a redeemer. We want a life changer. We want something that will last from now till eternity long. God, that's what we want because that's who you are. God, help us to forget ourselves, to forget our pride, to forget all of our ways and concentrate on who you are in this very moment. And God, move mightily. God, save those that they're praying for right now. God, bring them home. God, even this very hour, Lord, let them be seen on their face in tears, crying out for a Savior, for a Redeemer, for a God who listens. God, make it happen. Lord, we know you can. I pray for healing this morning. I got I pray there's not a bout of cancer. There's not a, a, a sickness or illness that exists that the blood of Jesus cannot fix. God, we proclaim healing. God, we pray that you would open doors that have never been opened before. God, when, the, when people are applying for things, when they're out there trying to succeed, open up doors that no man can shut. And shut doors that they don't have, that you don't have for them. But God, I pray, move today like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And if you're here and you believe it, then right where you are in your own way, will you begin to praise God? The Bible says when you ask, believe you have received. You need to thank God. Thank God. What kind of praise would you give him if he healed you? What kind of praise would you give him if that lost loved one came to those doors crying, seeking God? What kind of praise would you give him if the answer was already here? That's the way you've got to praise God when you ask. He's already done it. He's already finished it. It's already done. But you've got to give God the glory for it. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, he's worthy of praise, church. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glorify him, church, in whatever way you do. It don't matter. It don't matter. If you're a shouter, shout. If you're a crier, cry. God accepts it all. He accepts every form of gratitude, every form of prayer, every form of praise. He accepts it across the board. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now. Lord, thank you for the answer that's coming. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing. Lord, you are mighty and great and awesome, and nothing is going to stop Nothing is going to stop you from being who you are. God, we praise you and thank you right now for what you're doing in their lives. What you're doing, God. Hallelujah. Answer the prayer, Lord Jesus. Answer it, Almighty God. Right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Church, he is mighty. Don't ever forget it. Don't go out there and forget today. He's just as mighty tomorrow when you wake up. The Lord carries and we get tomorrow. He's just as mighty then. He's the same God outside of these walls and he is in these walls. He's the same glorious God. Treat him like that. Let this be the year that we actually treat the Son of God like the Son of God. Not like a holiday. Not like just a a reason to get together and have fun. But actually treat Him like the Lamb of God. Treat Him like the Savior of the world. If the church would treat Him like that, He would move. He would move again. He's more than an ornament. He's more than a Christmas present. He's more than a meal with your friends. He is the Lamb of God. He's mighty God. And He is wonderful. I hope today that when you go forward, that every time you hear the word wonderful, you'll never hear it the same. Every time someone talks about counseling or counsel, you won't hear it the same. 
anytime everybody says something is mine, you won't hear it the same. You'll say, those are reserved for my God. Because he is those things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for being here this morning. I'm honored and privileged to be your pastor. You guys love on us. The offering, thank you so much for those who gave. And if you didn't have to give, I understand. Don't feel bad. We love having you. Being here with you is enough for us. We love it. We believe God is up to something special here. Amen. Amen. And sooner or later, he's going to fill this left side the way he's filled his right side. But listen, right side, you got to help the left side. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I don't mean next Sunday, everybody just sit over here and make this side in. We want new faces, new friends, new family. We believe God's up to something great. I believe he's doing something special, not just here, but all around the world. In every church. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're going to give me this. We want you to know for the last few weeks that we have secretly yeah. <laughs> been receiving an offering, a love offering for you and your family. Thank you so and, much. And uh, on behalf of the church, we want to tell you that we love you. And this is from the church. Amen. And your family. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Happy to be here. Praise God. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to participate in our snowman thing. Tell people how much you love them. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Uh, and let them have, And go by and read it. Someone may have said something about you up there. Uh, so go by and see it. It's okay to do that. Go by and see. Did someone say something nice about me? And if they didn't, write something about yourself. Put it back. <laughs> Amen. I'm a wonderful person. Why? Not because I'm wonderful, because he is wonderful and he is in me. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray a prayer of dismissal uh, and, and just have a wonderful time. Also, one thing I've almost forgot for, to announce, uh, our Christmas party. We're having a church Christmas party, uh, and Candy has been so gracious to host it at her house. Uh, so we're all going to go to there. If you want to know where to go, there's flyers on that back table. Just pick up one. It'll tell you where to go, where to be, what time. And we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. God, because it's true. Lord, and it will set us free. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us as we depart. God, don't let this feeling leave us. Let us carry it all our life long. Lord, to always remember that you are mighty and you are awesome. God, and there's nothing you can't do. God, be here every time we gather together. Let you be the focus of why we're here. God, Amen. and let you be the one that we glorify every time. God, we just thank you. Watch over us. Bring us back the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Guys, shake hands. Be friendly. You're dismissed. Hope to see you either Tuesday.